everyone today i've been working on tassels and my tassels are inspired by this swap that i did with rebecca cook some of you will know rebecca from crystals art it out she's also a member of art journal prompts and i know rebecca from um, another group that we're, we're both in but this was what um or part of what rebecca sent me she sent me this gorgeous junk journal i just love this look at that cover isn't that just beautiful and let me just flick through the pages this is just so much fun i love love this and it's ready for me to decorate when I can um, sit down and find um, some time that's it just love the back cover as well can you see the glimmer in that but just look at this gorgeous boho tassel I just love it it's it's just gorgeous so tactile it just feels really nice Rebecca has attached a couple of charms we've got this bird charm here um, and this a cog here I just love it and so I've been having a play because I just thought you know these would be lovely to um, send in happy mail to attach to journals etc some of you will know that um, I picked up some of these key ring pieces from the scrap store oh goodness me when did I show and tell these at least four or five months ago I've popped them in my basket I've probably got about 30 of them and just haven't got around to making anything with them I plan to make bead dangles and I just thought these um, ribbon charms ribbon tassels would be absolutely perfect so I've made a couple myself here we go let me just grab mine for you these are the ones that um, I've made um, some of you will also know that I used to make handmade jewellery before I got into mixed media so I have quite a substantial um, bead stash as well and all the bead bead and jewellery making um, tools so these are mine these are my version of them these are quite long and they can be trimmed down as as you know necessary some of these I might I might give away but they just feel so gorgeous I just absolutely love these so I'm just going to show you how I made mine so what you want to do is grab a whole heap of different types of ribbons and yarns and trims and that kind of thing I've got some polka dot ribbon here I purchased this from the local floristry wholesalers it was two pounds and there is ten oh five meters on this which I think is is quite a good price for, for, for two pounds beautiful I've got that in quite a few different colors um, I also picked up this wool felt trim as well um, so these are just odd lengths I just think these are gorgeous these are 100% wool, wool felt in all these gorgeous um, boho colors I've got some yarn as well when I was going through leftover from when I was going through my scarf making phase which has got to be at least eight or nine years ago um, some bias binding left that I picked up from the scrap store I've got this in various diff different colors um, and then various ribbons as well this was from either Aldi or Lidl I can't remember does it say on on here no I'm not sure I've got a feeling this one was uh, was Aldi and I've also got this pack of ribbons here that I purchased from the pound shop as well this was um, a, a pack of 10 1.3 meters per ribbon um, and there's five different um, varieties there so what I have done is cut them to size so there we go I've got a piece of the wool felt a piece of the yarn some of the um, heart ribbon here we go from the Aldi set some of that polka dot ribbon that um, I showed you some t-shirt material as well I picked this up I think from from Tiger this is um, t-shirt um, yarn the bias binding which I've cut it was too wide so I've just put a nick in it and then and then just tore it just so that I can have a much thinner piece and then this is a piece of silk fabric as well that um, I've just torn a in fact I didn't tear it I, I cut a strip strip off so that's what I'm left with and what I am going to do is I've got one of these key rings so let me just cut this open and show you what it um, what it looks like um, these are from a housing association so all I did was just took the little disc off so that um, I'm left with with that and all I'm going to do is just poke that through the key ring until I've got it about halfway like that so I'm going to fiddle around with these until they're all even and then I'm going to grab a piece of string to tie it um, in, a, in a knot and hold it in place and then we can secure it with some some wire right so I've just got um, a piece of string I've um, fiddled around with these until they're pretty much um, even I can trim them at the end as well 
But what I want to do now is just tie them just so that um, they're, they're nice and neat, which will make it easier for me to put my wire around. So I've just got some, uh, oh gosh, what's this? Um, waxed cord. And so I'm just going to tie this just to secure them. There we go. And then I can pull them, pull them down and just fiddle around with them, make them, make them neat. I've got, oh, that's just a piece of the yarn that's poking through. I quite like that. That's fine. So I'm going to tie another knot there like that and then trim, trim the ends. You can use any kind of thin cotton or string for, for this. It really, really doesn't matter because we're going to cover this up with the wire anyway. So that's that. And then I am going to grab a piece of wire. This is 20 gauge silver plated wire. So right, where's my trimmers? So I'm just going to trim a piece off. Oh, whoopsie daisy. There we go. This is left over from my jewellery making days. And then it's just a case of wrapping. Let's, here we go. You don't need any tools for doing this, this part here, apart from your, your trimmers, of course, to cut your wire. But any kind of craft wire will do, do for this. And it's just a case of, of wrapping it round and trying to be as neat about it as you possibly can. There we go. So I am just going to wrap it, trying to get as close to the the previous wrap as I as I can, going down, down, down. And can, can you see that looks quite neat? There we go. And we'll have one more, and then I'm going to trim it, and I'm going to trim it in the middle there like that. And then I want my round nose pliers or bent nose pliers, it doesn't really matter. And what I want to do is just bend that over just so that um, that end is tucked in. I'm going to do the same here as well, just so that um, whoever receives this is not going to poke themselves. There we go. So that's all nice and nice and neat. Okay, so now what I've got is a little charm that I've made. Here we go. I've made this one here and I'm going to show you how I did it. It's ever so, ever so easy. I've cut a piece of jewellery wire and I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and I'm going to put them there like that. I want um, a fairly decent size hole. Bend it and then wrap the wire back over. And then I want it so that those two pieces of wire are parallel. Can you see that? Then I'm going to wrap that one over and just twist it three times. One, two, three. And then I'm going to trim with my wire cutters. In fact, I'm going to be easier doing it this way. There we go. And then I can bend that over so that it's all nice and nice and neat. I've got to try and do this now and um, and see what what I'm doing. Then try and flatten it out ready for you to attach your bead. So I've got the same beads that I've already used here. So I've got this fuchsia pearl sort of like a purpley mauvey pearl and then I've got um, a lampwork bead. This is a mass-produced lampwork bead. You can use, you know, handmade lampwork beads, anything, anything you like. You could use all pearls, just use what you have. Old broken jewellery is absolutely perfect for, for, for this. So that's my little bead dangle. Now all I am going to do is take my jewellery pliers again and I'm just going to leave a little bit at the end and I'm just going to bend that and bring my wire back round over the, over the top, reinsert my pliers and bring it down so that they're parallel, twist my wire round and just keep wrapping again until I've filled that gap. Hopefully it will only need three, three wraps, it might need four. There we go, I misjudged it. Oh, five, there we go. That was that was an untidy one, wasn't it? Difficult to do on camera, but, um, but never mind. And again, I'm just going to trim that piece of wire and then tuck it, tuck it in so that there's no sharp edges or sharp pieces. And so that's the first part of my, my dangle. 
up nice and secure because we've wrapped it so there we are in fact I know now why I've ended up with five because this is quite a, a big hole and it's um, sunk all the way down but that's fine it really doesn't matter so now I've got um, a flat head pin it just looks like um, a dress makers makers pin but without the sharp bit and I've also got um, a little glass crystal bead in sort of like a purple color and so I'm going to do the same with this I'm going to wrap here we go wrapping over reinserting my pliers and wrapping this round this is just a really neat way of, of doing things I just much prefer doing my bead wraps this this way there we go and we can trim trim that off and bend that loose end in but I might need to trim that a little bit more there we go pinch that loose end in there we are make sure that's nice and nice and neat so that's what we're that's what we've got so far so now we just need to attach these two together to complete our charm and somewhere in this little box I've got a jump ring this is an eight millimeter strong jump ring this is a heavy duty jump ring and I think those are much better because otherwise they just come undone and you just end up losing all of your charms which is just no good so I've just attached that pinching it closed now when you're opening a jump ring don't ever be tempted to pull it apart like that you open it like that can you see and so now I'm going to attach this one in the top like that and what I've done is I've pulled um, my bottom wrap a little bit loose just so that I've got room to attach my jump ring to it and you want to make sure as well that you attach it to the one at the on on the back as well not where we tucked that little loose end under um, because of course it won't be secure enough and then you can pinch it closed if you if you want to there we go we can pinch that down if we want to it really doesn't matter and and that's it I just think that looks adorable I just absolutely love these aren't those gorgeous you know these would make lovely stocking fillers for Christmas these would be lovely attached to to journals in the same way that Rebecca attached it to, to mine I just think these are so so pretty and you can add more charms either either side if, if you want to but I just love the fact that we've got a really eclectic mix of different types of of yarns and and fabrics and use any types of beads you like for this as long as they're color coordinated um it really doesn't matter and so that's what we've got now I just love that doesn't that look beautiful it's so pretty and so I'm just going to pull these ribbons nice and tight and then I'm going to grab my scissors and we're just going to trim the ends just so that they're all a similar size there we go and then we can pop pop those in the bin and just get rid of these little excess bits there we go and that's what we've um, ended up with I just love that I just think these are so pretty and you know hung on to a journal I just think these are gorgeous you could cut them shorter and they'd make a, a, a fabulous key ring so many ideas for, for these I just love them thanks ever so much Rebecca for for the idea the inspiration um so I hope you like that and um, I hope you th that's given you some ideas of more stocking fillers for, for Christmas um, you know happy mail gifts for friends whatever you want to do with them so if you like that please give you know Rebecca a <laughs> thumbs up seeing as it was her idea and let me know what you think in the comments below take care everyone I'll see you all again soon bye for now